Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study today. Baba, wa dupe lo wanyi fwe eko bibeli wa ati asaleli. Thank you because of the way you are exalting Jesus Christ before us. A dupe lo wanyi bi esengbe Jesu gani wa juwa. And we thank you because of the new covenant that he mediates. A si dupe lo wanyi fwe maje mo ti toti o wa si alari nare. Thank you for his better sacrifice. A dupe fwe yi rubo re ti okwe yi. Thank you for his better ministry. A dupe lo wanyi fwe yi se yana se re ti odara ju lo. Thank you for the great privileges we have in the new covenant. A dupe lo wanyi fwe an wan fwa ni tiko. Thank you for revealing your mind to us in scripture. We pray, O Lord, that as you reveal Christ to us more and more, you'll make us to have more faith and depend upon him and trust him and have more confidence in him. In Jesus' name. We pray that you interpret your word to us today. Tomorrow, if one you and strengthen us in our hearts and our faith as we look at your word today. Yes, you know, look on in work on at any name, but go away at him one more on you. We bless your name for the answer. I feel book of four look on you for you down in Jesus' name. We pray. Ni or look on Jesus, you are bad. Today we return to the study of the Hebrews. As you would have discovered, the epistle to the Hebrews stands out very clearly as an essential, central, important book of the New Testament. And yet we need to understand that because of the way the epistle to the Hebrews is written, there are many believers that read through the epistle to the Hebrews and they fail to understand. And in different parts of the epistle to the Hebrews, you find references to the Old Testament as the shadow as the uh, symbol uh, waiting for the reality and the fulfillment the accomplishment to come in the new testament the new covenant we have been slowly going on and we have been gradually studying from chapter to chapter and verse to verse. And we're still continuing with chapter 7 today. Actually, we we'll come to the concluding verses in chapter 7. The title or the topic of what we're looking at today is Jesus, the guarantee of a better covenant. Jesus, the guarantee of a better covenant. As we look at this chapter itself, you will see there are ten points that stand out very clearly. Telling us that Jesus Christ is far more excellent than the high priest of the old covenant. The first high priest of the old covenant in the Old Testament is, uh, was uh, Aaron. And of course, Aaron was greater than all the other priests that came after him. And to prove that Jesus Christ is greater than Aaron, will prove that Jesus Christ is greater than all the high priests, all the priests that came after him. Lati wa fi di mure mo le kwe eje su ni o la, o si daraju Aaron ilo. Ele wa fi ye wa gbang ba kwe alufa kalufa anu ma je mo lai lai Jesus san ju wan lo. That means that Jesus Christ is higher, he is greater than all the people that came, all those that offered sacrifices in the old covenant. Inye ni kwe Jesus o ga o to bi ju bo gwa wan alufa ta bi o lori alufa ti o se rubo ni no ma je mo lai lai lo. And this chapter 7 is making a comparison and is showing us that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is far above the priests of the old covenant. 
o wa nse afiwe ti o nfiye wa gbangba pe Jesu omo Olorun o ga lola ju gbogbo awon olori alufa nu ma jemu lai lai lo If you look at the chapter you will see what the chapter is talking about Ti o ba wori dada wa ri nkan ti ori nso nipa re Number 1 it tells us that Aaron was only a man whereas Christ is the son of God. Akoko ninu re ni pe ori yin so fun wa pe eniyan lasan ni Aaron ije sugbon Christ je omo Olorun. That he brings out in verse 3 and verse 28. Ele lo so ninu ese ikete ati ese ikeji ni ogun. Number 2 it tells us that Aaron belonged to the tribe of Levi whereas Jesus Christ according to the flesh sprang from the royal tribe of Judah and he became the priest king ekeji ni pe aroni wa lati nu eya lefi be ni christi ni pati ara o wa lati nu eya juda ti idile oba o wa ti di alofa ati oba aaron could only be a priest but jesus christ was more than a priest a priest as well as a king kiki alofa ni aroni le je sugbon ni ti jesu o nlo ba o nla alofa number 3 aaron was made after the law of a carnal commandment whereas jesus christ came after the power of an endless life eketa ni pe afi aroni je gege bi ofin ilana ni pati ara sugbon ni ti christi christi that's what he tells us in verse 16 who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment like Aaron but after the power of an endless life this is very important now number 4 Aaron will be made nothing perfect but when Jesus came he made everything perfect Perfect. Verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Number five, Aaron was unable to bring the sinner near to God, but Christ has brought us near to God. At the latter part of verse 19, it says, by the which we draw near unto God. It is number six now. Aaron was not inducted into the priestly office by a divine oath, but Christ was. You see that in verse 21, for those priests were made without an oath. But you see concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, he say, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Number seven, Aaron had many successors, that is, many people, many priests that came after him, but Christ had none. See verses 23 and 24. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, Jesus Christ, because he continues ever, he has an unchangeable priesthood. Ati ni to to a wan kupo le a ti fi je a lo fa. Ni to ri wan ko le wa ti ti ni to ri iku. So bon wun iya ni pa jesu ni to ri o wa ti ti lai. O ni o iya lo fa ti a ko le ron ni po. H. Aaron died but Christ liveth forever. Eke jo. Nine, Aaron was a sinner, but Christ was separate from sinners. He was holy and undefiled. Number ten, 
Ten Aaron to offer sacrifice daily, but Christ's sacrifice is once for all. Ikewa Aaron ilati ma arubo lo jujuma suba arubo ti Jesu ekani aruda aruda ata arufi. In this in this single chapter, over and over, we are told that Jesus Christ is greater and higher and better than the priests of the Old Testament. Ninu ori kaso so ini atin soli ra le ra pe Jesu dara ju. And those of us who worship the Lord on the basis of the new covenant, we ought to know who Jesus Christ is, and we ought to know the greatness of our high priest. And as we talk about the new covenant and the better covenant, Jesus Christ is the guarantee, the surety of that new covenant. The verses we are studying today, you find from verse 20 to verse 28. And you will see that there are three important things we are being told. Number one, we are told of the surety of a better covenant. Look at verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better covenant. That's point one. The surety of a better covenant. There's a second thing that he mentions. He talks about Jesus as a savior to the uttermost. Look at verse 25. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Savior to the uttermost. There is a third point that we are going to consider. Jesus Christ is presented to us as being separate from sinners. Look at verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Three points therefore stand out clearly in our study today. Number one, shorty of a better covenant. Number two, savior to the uttermost. Number three, separate from sinners. Let us look at these points one by one. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 20. It says, In as much as not without an oath, he was made a priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said to him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much, was Jesus made a surety of a better covenant. And so you will see that when we talk about testament, we are talking about covenant. Oh, 
And this passage is talking about something most significant and deeply important. It's talking about the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's making a comparison between his priesthood and the priesthood of the Old Testament priests. And he said Christ was constituted priest by a divine oath. That point itself exalts him above the priesthood under the Old Testament under the law. Here we are taught that Christ is priest forever in order to show that there will never be any other priest that will come after him. And that the Levitical priesthood is taken out of the way, Jesus Christ has now taken their position. And you can see that Jesus Christ is higher, is greater. You can see that the way he became a priest, officially and spiritually announced by the Lord, you will see that he was much, much higher than them. Aaron was not uh, put into office by an oath. That's what it says in verse 20. And in as much as not without oath, and, and not without an oath. He was made an high priest. He was made a priest referring to the Lord. In the case of Aaron, no oath, no swearing. In the case of Christ, there was an oath that made him to become the priest. <laughs> And uh, it says in verse 21, But those priests were made without an oath. But in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, The Lord swear and will not change his mind, will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We've read that before, but let us look at it again in Psalm 110. Talking about the priesthood of Melchizedek and the Christ that will come after the order of Melchizedek. And you will see that this came with an oath. When it came with an oath, you must remember once again, whenever the Lord made anything with an oath, it meant that it was unchangeable. It stood forever. He will not change his mind. It says in Psalm 110 verse 4 The Lord has sworn and will not repent Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek it was the intention of the Lord that the priesthood of Christ will replace the priesthood of Aaron. And therefore, he made it on the basis of an oath. And as he made it on the basis of an oath, he even said, he is the Lord that said it, he will not change. He will 
will not repent. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. From verse 16. For men very less were by greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show to the heirs of the promise the immutability that is the unchangeableness of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. That is, whenever God confirms something with an oath, it meant it will not change. It will remain forever. By two immutable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled to refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Now he tells us because this has happened. Jesus Christ stands in a very important position. Jesus And now in verse 22 of Hebrews chapter 7, it says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Now as you look at your Bible, you'll find Old Testament, New Testament. And as you look at your Bible, you'll find the Old Testament divided into some parts. The Old Testament has the part which is the law. And then the Old Testament has the condition of fulfilling that law, then these promises will become yours if you fulfill that law. And in the case of the Old Testament, we are not told of any shorty on individual basis. The law was there. If you broke the law, the judgment came upon you. The promises were there. The privileges were there. If you fulfill the law, the promises and the privileges will become yours. But then many of them were breaking the law. And therefore there was a priest, there was a high priest. If they broke the law and the judgment was coming upon them, there was a high priest that will quickly make sacrifice. If they repented of their sins and the priest made the sacrifice for them, their sins will be forgiven and then they will start again enjoying the promises of the law. But as you look at the lives of the children of Israel, from time to time they were breaking the law. And the judgment was coming upon them. And it was repeated so many times. In the old, in the wilderness alone, the Lord accused the children of Israel, these ten times you have murmured against me. And therefore you see they were breaking the law, they were breaking the covenant, judgment was coming upon them. Then they came to the land of promise. And it says all through the time of the of Joshua and the elders that outlived Joshua, the children of Israel, they kept the commandment of the law. 
But then we also told that there arose a generation that knew not the Lord, that knew not the miracles of the Lord, they disobeyed the Lord and went to serve idols. Again, the punishment came upon them. And we are told they cried unto the Lord. And the Lord raised up a judge. And then he delivered them from all their travails and trials. And they had rest for a few years. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord again. And the Lord sold them into the hands of the Midianites. Who oppressed them seven years. Then they cried unto the Lord again. And the Lord raised up a deliverer. And the Lord removed all their captivity. And they had a period of rest again. And the children of Israel. They disobeyed the Lord again. And the Lord sold them into the hands of their enemies. And they groaned and they cried again. And the Lord raised up a deliverer. You will find in the Old Testament that that is a repeated story. Falling, rising, falling, rising, being judged, being blessed, being judged, being blessed, all through the Old Testament. Until the Lord said, why should you be stricken anymore? Why should you be stricken anymore? Anymore. From the head even to the feet, there is no sound part. Everywhere is with putrefying souls. It has not been closed, it has not been mollified with ointment. And then he said, A new covenant will I make with you. Not according to the covenant I made with your fathers. Which covenant they break? But a new covenant will I make with the house of Israel in those days. And their sins will I forgive. And I will write my laws in their inward parts. That's how, as you come to the end of the Old Testament Malachi, and you open the next page, then you see the New Testament. And immediately you open the first page of the New Testament. You are the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That tells you then that the new covenant, the new testament is starting with the Lord Jesus Christ. As you come to the end of the New Testament, he's talking about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It's from the beginning to the end it's talking about Christ. He's telling us that Christ is a foundation of the new covenant. He's a guarantee, the surety of the new covenant. He's a priest as well as a sacrifice of the new covenant. He's the one that bore our blessing that bore our sickness, that bore our suffering in the new covenant. He's the one that has gone to the Father pleading for us, making intercession for us. It's, a, it's the atonement. It's the propitiation for our sin. Through him all our sins are covered and cleansed. It, it is through him now we have the blessings of the new covenant. The pardon of the new covenant is greater than that of the old covenant. The purity of the new covenant is greater than that of the old covenant. The power of the Holy Ghost we have in the new covenant is greater than that of the Old Testament. The promises of the New Testament are stronger than the ones in the Old Testament. The provision of the new covenant is greater than that of the old covenant. 
And all the things we are able to inherit in the new covenant is greater than inheritance of the old covenant. That's why it says in that Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22. He calls it a better testament. A better testament. The old testament, the old covenant was made on the blood of animals. The new testament, the new covenant is based on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sacrifice of the old covenant was officiated by a faulty fallible, sinful man, the priest of the Old Testament. In fact, the priests of the Old Testament, they had to first make sacrifice for their own sins before making sacrifice for the sins of the people. But the high priest of the New Testament, the New Covenant, is the Holy Son of God, the pure Son of God, the sinless Son of God, the perfect son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he tells us then. He says, by so much was Jesus made a shorty of the New Testament, New Covenant. Now you need to understand this word, shorty. What does this mean, shorty? You see in those days and even in our day today if there is a contract between two people or we say a contract between two parties there is someone a third person that comes to say I will stand as a guarantor I will stand as a guarantee I will stand as a shorty should in case this man will fail hold me responsible that's the guarantor that's the guarantee that's the shorty and the keta yi ni yo wa jade wa ti o fo wa so ya wi pe mo fe duro gege bi o ni gbo wo la rin eyin mejeji eni keji yi to ba sa lo tabi o da deun wa mu mi gege bi eni ti o je jo re eleyi ni an pe ni o ni gbo wo and it says jesus christ is standing for you like that is standing for me like that is standing for the church like that before the father he is saying if they fail Charge it to my account. O wa so pe Jesu on duro fun o Jesu on duro fun mi be lo duro fun ijo ni waju baba pe ti awon won yi ba kuna I want you to look at an example in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 43. This was the time when the sons of Jacob were to go and buy food in Egypt. They had gone for the first time, they wanted to go the second time. The second time, Joseph in Egypt, they didn't know it was Jacob. They said, the master and the ruler in the land. He told us that Benjamin must come with us. And now they needed to go the second time to buy food. And uh, they said, let us go. But if we're going to go, Benjamin must go with us. And Israel, that is Jacob, said, no, Benjamin will not go. I've lost his brother. I don't know what happened to him. This one that remains, he will not go with you. Israel, and Jacob, what happened to it was then that Judah came forward and he said I will be shorty I will guarantee the safety of Benjamin I will be the guarantor if anything happens to him hold me responsible 
Mimufun. Genesis 43 verses 8 and 9. Genesis C. Ori Ketale ni ogo jese ikeju ati ikeso. Shida said to Israel that is to Jacob his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. I will be surety for him. Of my hand shall thou require him if I bring him not unto thee and send him before thee then let me bear the blame forever that's a shorty judah si we fun israel yen jacob baba re pe ran odomo de na ba mi lo awa o si dide a o lo ki awa ki o leye ki a ma ba si seku ati awa ati iwo ati awon mo wewe wa emi yo si se oni gbowo re le owo mi ni iwo bere re bi emi ko ba mu pada fun o wa ki n si mu duro ni waju re nje emi ni yo ru ebi na lai lai eleyi ni oni gbowo now jacob the father he knew that uh, judah was serious and sincere about he ni se se yi jacob baba won o ti ma pe judah o mo nkan to nse he allowed them to go o wa je ki won lo when they got there nigba ti won de be joseph wanted to test them joseph went over there one way he wanted to know whether they had changed but they didn't know it was a test while they got all their food in their bags Joseph instructed his servants to put his cup uh, through which uh, by which he drank to put it in the bag of Benjamin. Nigba ti won wa di erun won tan Joseph awon o mo ko ni o wa so fun iranse re pe a go ti o n fi mu mi ki won ki o fi sinu eru Benjamin. And then they left. Won wa lo. After they had left. Nigba ti won lo. He said the people after them. Oni ka awon eyan ma le won. He said why have you done this? Oni ki lo de te se bayi. Why have you rewarded me evil for good? E se ti e bi fi bi san ore fun mi. Why have you taken my call? Ki lo de ti e mu ago mi. Don't you know I will discover? E o mo pe won mo ni. And he said we don't do that we are sincere faithful people the money that was returned to our bags the other time we brought it back then quickly somebody said check up all our bags anyone that you find uh, your cup inside his bag he will be your servant let him die and he started checking and now they found a cup in Benjamin's bag. Well, it appeared that Benjamin now had, had done something bad. Could they now say, well, you have done something bad. We have said wherever they find that thing in his bag, he will die. That's your problem. We're leaving you behind. We'll go and tell our father this what you did. That's a problem. Judah was a shorty. Judah only a guarantor. Who had given guarantee that this child will come back? Bring him not unto thee. Then I shall bear the blame for, to my father forever. Fun baba mi wi pe bi emi ko ba mu to wa emi o gba ebi na lodo baba mi lai lai Now therefore I pray thee let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my lord and let the lad go up with his brethren Nje ni sisi yi emi bi o je ki ranse re ki o joko ni ipo omode na bi eru fun oluwa mi ki o si je ki omode na ki o ba awon ara kunrin re goke lo the shorty became the substitute. I will bear the blame. I will bear the punishment. This boy had done something wrong. But I told my father that I will be shorty for this lad. Now see what he has done. He should be a bondman forever. Release him. 
to sile put me in his place because i told my father i will be surety for the land tori pe mo ti so fun baba mi pe emi yo di oni gbowo fun omo de na now jesus christ is surety of a better testament ni pa be jesus di oni gbowo ma je mu ti o da ra the benjamin that had done something wrong e won ni benjamin ti o ti se n to lodi it should be in captivity forever o ko gbe ko lo ye ko wa lai lai it should be in punishment forever ni ji a lo ye ko wa titi lai every sin you sinned against god gbo ese ti o ba da si olorun carries an everlasting punishment igi ya ye ra ye lo ye ko de ba hell fire should be your law e orun apadi lo ye ko je le re but there is a solution sugbon ona ba yo wa jesus christ has become the surety of the new testament jesus oluwa ti wa di oni gbo wo ma je mu ti o dara ju na he is telling the father o wa so fun baba the surety is the substitute a oni gbo wo oni aroko the surety is the sin bearer oni gbo wo o lo lati ru ese the surety is the one that takes the blame of the other fellow and it says put it on me oni gbo wo o lo ma n gba be elomiran ti a ni e da lemi lori that's why now you are free nitori be o wa dominira he was made to be sin for us you need no sin that we may become the righteousness of god in him eni ti a bi se ese fun wa eni ti ko da ese re ki a wa ki o le di ododo olorun that's why you are now free you have peace in your mind you have rest in your soul because christ has taken your place there is no more punishment for you on the basis that you believe on the lord jesus Jesus Christ you are free and you are delivered Nitori be lo se wa wa ni omi ni ra ti ko si ese fun e ma tabi ebi kankan fun omo nitori pe Jesus ti gba epo re nipa be adariji o ati so edi omi ni ra There's an example in the New Testament Apere na wa nu ma je mu ti nu ma je mu ti Why this in Philemon Wa ri elenu Philemoni That's just a book before Hebrews Iwe kan so so ni siwaju Eberu In Philemon verse from verse 18 to verse 19 Philemoni ori kan na ni ese iko keji de logo si iko de logo Philemon was like a great master Philemoni o dabi Oluwa nla but Onesimus was a servant Sugbon Onesimu o ni iranse re Onesimus had stolen a great amount Onesimu o ti gbe owo nla lo and he had run away from Philemon o si ti sacro lodo Philemoni and eventually in the imprisonment of um, of uh, Paul the apostle he met with he met with Onesimus sugbon nigbati a wa ti paul mo ati mo ati mo le ogbe won kan na lo se alabapade onisimo and as he met onisimo he led onisimo to the lord bi o se wa se alabapade onisimo yi o wa to si odo oluwa and now onisimo became a believer nibayi onisimo yi wa ti di oni gbagbo there was still a problem sugbon wa la kan si wa o before he let philemon he had stolen something he had done something criminal and uh, philemon did not uh, know his where about Paul was going to send Onesimus back to Philemon. Ki o to fi Philemon ni oga re sile, o ti ji owo nla gbe lodo re. Philemon ko si ma bi ti Onesimus yi gbe wa, sugbon ni bayi o Paul fe da pada sodo Philemon ni. As he sent him back, bi o se ran pada. Hear the word of Paul. Wa gbo oro Paul o. Remember what I'm telling you. This is to show you who a shorty is. Lati nti mo so fun e o, lati fi yi o on ti oni gbo wo tumo si. A guarantor. I need to own for what so ya Somebody that gives guarantee for another person. Anything for what so ya tabi ti on dro gege bi oni gbo wo fun enikan. Verse 18 in a Philemon. Philemon ese ikeji de logo. If he has wronged the or OS the or put that on my account. Sugbon bi o ba ti se orara tabi o ti je oni gbese kan ka si mi lorun i paul verse 19 i've reached it with my own hand i will repay it emi ni ese e kokan de logun emi paul li o fi owo ara mi ko emi o san pada that's a surety that's a guarantor ele ni oni gbo wo tin fowo so ya fun ni he has stronged you o ti se orara he has offended you o ti mu obinu he owes you anything o ji oni gbese o nkan he cannot pay ko le san pada put it on my account ka si mi lorun i am the one at fault emi ni mo je bi i am the one that owes you emi ni mo ji oni gbese i am the one that is to pay you back emi ni ngo san pada i paul have reached it with my own hand emi paul lo o fi owo ara mi ko don't take anything from him i will repay you ma se gba nko nlowo re emi o san pada fun 
language of a surety. And Jesus Christ is a surety of the new covenant. All the sins you have committed, all the debts you owe, everything you have done wrong, the surety of the new covenant is talking to the heavenly father. If he owes you anything, all the debt he owes, all the sins he has committed, put that into my account. I, Jesus Christ, the surety of the new covenant, I'm saying it to the father, I will pay it all. But that is only on the basis you come under the new covenant. If you remain in the old covenant, it is not a shorty for you. If you keep on killing animals, you don't accept him as a shorty of the new covenant for you. You keep on burning incense, burning candle, drinking water from Jordan, from River Jordan, or from Lagoon. Or you are still doing some Old Testament things. You have not looked at Jesus Christ the Savior. The Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away. You have not leaned upon him, rested upon him, and you have not trusted in him. And you have not put your faith totally in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are still thinking the work of your hand will save you. If you are still thinking, if I climb the mountain, if I go to the valley, if I do this one, if I give money to the beggar, if I do that, then I will save myself. You are under the old covenant. But you can move on today to the new covenant. In the new covenant, all our sins are put on Christ. All our blame put on Christ. All our shortcoming put on Christ. And he is pleading with the Father. He is telling the Father, if he owes you anything, charge it to my account. That's why now we get saved. And there is no condemnation anymore. He paid the price, he has paid it all. He takes our sickness. He takes our infirmity. He takes our problem. He pays our debt. He takes our crime. We stand before the Father now without sin, forgiven and cleansed and innocent before the heavenly throne. But what kind of Savior is this? That leads us to point number two. He is a savior to the uttermost. You see, there is a mistake some believers made. They come to the Lord and they get saved. And they feel that the Lord is only shorty of the new covenant for a brief short moment. If they have any problem spiritually, any weakness spiritually, Spiritually, any infirmity spiritually, if they yield to temptation, they remain in that temptation, they remain in that sin, they will be crying and crying and crying. They will feel that the Savior has now totally abandoned them. They will feel that judgment must definitely forever come upon them. Some of them say, there is no point coming back to the law. I have offended the law. I have backslidden. I have done something wrong. The Lord loved me before. I loved the Lord before. But I have disappointed him. And the judgment of God I know is waiting for me. Ah, Jesus Christ himself must be so unhappy now. Jesus must push me to the devil. 
devil. We must say whatever my eyes see, that is my problem. They do not see Jesus Christ as the one that says to the uttermost. The one that is still standing for them. The one that is still pleading for them. The one that is still making intercession for them. And this Hebrew say, Peaceful to the Hebrews is telling us that Jesus is not the savior of a moment of time. He is the savior to the uttermost. Look at it from verse 24 now, verse 23. And they truly were many priests. Because they were not allowed, they were not permitted to suffer to continue by reason of death. You know what he's telling you? Those priests were not permanent. They were changed because of death. There was instability. Therefore, there was insecurity. Listen to this. Now, you see, for example, now we are under a kind of government. And you know that sometimes they can change the administrator of a particular state. And you will see the contractors, the way they complain. They will say, Let me hurry up. Let me make haste. Check up my file. I want this my document to be signed. Because they can change the administrator anytime. They can change the administrator. And the new administrator comes. And then he begins his work again. He says, Give me time to study all the files, all the documents. It will take me time. Therefore, the instability will bring insecurity. You see the old covenant. A priest is there today. And it depends on the nature of that priest and the attitude of that priest. If it's a nice person, he counsels very well. He helps very well. He encourages the people to bring their sacrifice he makes atonement for them if that priest dies another priest will take his place and these people are still going to sin and now they still have to make sacrifice the priests were being changed and you will see the problem they are come to the new covenant the same priest 2000 years ago Ago, is still the Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Lord on the throne. From the moment you got saved, your file has been with him. He is the one that is dealing with it every time. His love does not change. His mercy does not change. His provision does not change. You go to him, he's ever merciful, the Savior to the uttermost. How would you like Jesus Christ to be changed? I said, uh, suppose now Jesus, he has been your savior, he has been your redeemer, you know his name, you know how mercifully he is. Suppose now God were to decide, well, Jesus will have done it enough, there will be a change now, another person will take your place, we don't know how that person will be. Uh, but thank God it remains ever the same. Look at verse 24. But this man, because he continues ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Because of that, for that unchangeable priesthood, wherefore in verse 
25, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. Seeing he ever live to make intercession for them. <laughs> And it's your battle alone, one nepasere, nitoriti on bella, you titila latima bebe for one. Thank God is your savior. O penny for long, oh, you got a is your redeemer. O no, you are quite a is your substitute. O yaro of one is your sin bearer. O no rest, he knows the pain he bought, he bought for you. Oh, my, nera to farada for one. You know, sometimes, oh, my, if uh, you know a woman had uh, been waiting to have a child, she will be ready to your battle, petrol, and ready on my. Eventually, she got pregnant. But during that pregnancy, she suffered and suffered and suffered. And eventually, on the day of delivery, she labored and labored. And then maybe they performed operation. And now, every time she takes her bath, she sees the mark of the operation on her body. And every time she looks at that child, she will remember the pain that she bore. Now there is a servant walking in the house. Every little thing that that child does, the servant will take a wire and will, will uh, lash that child. Ah. The mother will say, please, hold on. I know the pain I bore on that child. If he does anything, report him to me. Don't beat him again. Don't take ordinary broom of uh, stick or broom and beat this child. You hear? You don't know the pain I bore on this child. Then he will call the child. Sit down here. Have you heard that before? So That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus knew the pain he bore for you. Jesus my agony on the cross. When something happens, and the devil takes wire, and he says, I'll beat life out of you. And Jesus said, Stop that. You don't understand. I know the pain I bore on this child. Don't touch him again. He says, Mary, come here. Sit down here. Because Jesus Christ, He wants to save you to the uttermost. He is uh, making intercession for you before the Father. And many of us don't know how merciful the Lord is. We are even running away from the Lord. Whatever you have done, come back to the Lord. He remembers you. He is making intercession for you. I am happy that Jesus. Jesus is Savior to the uttermost. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Even if you have done something wrong, repent immediately. He lives in 99 perfect, innocent, righteous sheep. He runs after the single sheep that has gone astray. He doesn't want you to remain in sickness. He doesn't even want you to bear the punishment of your sin. There are some believers who say, Well, I know why I'm suffering. I know it's my fault. I know what I did. I know when I backslid. All these things that are happening to me now, I know it's my fault. Well, we know it's your fault. But Jesus doesn't want you to bear that thing. He is making intercession for you. Come and sit down at his side. He's a savior to the uttermost. And this Lord, He will take us through to the end. He will not allow us to die by the wayside. He will not allow us to backslide and go away forever. He will show His love to the very end. 
preserve you will protect you his prayer for you will always be answered by the father don't ever feel alone don't ever feel nobody cares for me about Jesus he cares for you nobody loves me about Jesus he loves you nobody cares whatever happens to me about Jesus he cares whatever happens to you in Romans chapter 8 and verse 34 who is he that condemned it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us he has a Christy Jesu Tioku, Kiasa Kukui Peti at Gidi de Kuroni Noku, and it yosi while your water or loro tiosi bebe for wa. And now he talks about the nature and the life and the conduct and the character, the characteristics of this uh, lamp of God, of this savior that saves to the uttermost. Niba yelo wan so ni pa ywa, ishe igbia ye or dragot or loro jesu lubala, and it yoti lost wa ju baba for wa. And he tells us he's separate from sinners. O so fu wag bang bakwe aya sort of crony no lesser from Hebrews chapter seven verse twenty six. For such an high priest became us, befitted us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. And now he goes on to talk about the quality of his priesthood. In verse 27, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer of sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once when he offered up himself he had no personal sin to atone for. All he atoned for was our own sin. And then in verse 28, for the Lord made men high priests which have infirmity. He's talking about the old covenant now. He run out his infirmity, and all the Levites, they have their infirmities. And you remember, Eli was a high priest. He had his own infirmity. Those high priests of the old covenant, Old Testament, they had their infirmities. But now he talks about Jesus Christ that had no infirmity. No imperfection. No iniquity. No sin. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Ti a se lenyi o fe, o fi o ma je, e ne ti a so di kwi kwe ti ti la e. Look at the qualities of his life in verse 26. In one way, i bi a ye re, ni no, e se e ke re, ni ni o gwa. For such an high priest became us, who is holy. Ni to ri kwe, i ru o lori al fa, bi a lo sa a ye wa, mi ma. That means, when you consider his life before the Lord, God looks at him, his internal life, his motive, his desires, everything within was holy. He was able to say the prince of this world comes and find nothing in me. Then he tells us who is harmless. That's the relationship between us and him. He was harmless before his disciples. He never hurt anyone. Holy. That talks about his relationship with God internally. 
harmless. That talked about his uh, relationship with men externally. Inwardly holy, externally harmless. And then he talks about him, he said, undefiled. He came into this world, a polluted place, a place of defilement. And yet he had no defilement of the world on him. And then he says, separate from sinners. He was with the sinners, he blessed them, he helped them, he did everything with them, but he never shared in their sin. It's like when he touched the leper, the leper got the cleansing through him, he never got the leprosy of the leper. He gave what he had cleansing unto the leper, but he did not get what the leper had, the prophet, uh, the uh, leprosy upon himself. He gave sinner salvation, forgiveness, without becoming a sinner himself. And then he says he's made higher than the heavens. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 How much more shall the blood of Christ Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot Unto God without spot Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God Holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners First Peter chapter 1 verse 19 but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. No blemish, no spot. First Peter chapter 2 verse 22. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. He did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. 1 John chapter 3 verse 5 And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. What is savior? What a high priest. And the Bible says he is able to save us to the uttermost. Those who come to God by him. The moment you come is the time that he saves. Because it's a savior that has power. He has authority on earth and in heaven. There is nothing to make him delay. When he was here on earth, the moment that people came, immediately he saved them. He need her to be praying for forgiveness and salvation for one year, for ten years. At that moment they came, come unto me, and they came unto him, he saved them immediately. 
And after we are saved, he gives us the power to go and sin no more. Because he's a mighty savior. He is a powerful savior. He is able to save. And if you are there today, you need the salvation of the Lord. You need the forgiveness of your sin. You need the remission, the removal of all your guilt. The Lord is a savior. He is your substitute. He is your sin bearer. He is a shorty of the New Testament. He is the one that is telling the Father whatever he has done, put it in my account. Now you can come before the Lord and you can look on Jesus Christ who died for you. You can say, Father, I know I'm a sinner, but all my sins I transfer to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't bear them anymore. I don't carry them anymore. Jesus has taken them away. And then you put your hands in the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, don't worry. There will be temptation in the way. There will be persecution in the way. The devil may want to even harass your life. He may want to still cut you away from heaven. I have saved you. I'm the savior to the uttermost. Until you step into heaven. The Lord will never leave you. Until you open your eyes to see the father in heaven. But Jesus will never let you go. No matter how weak you are. How faulty you have been in the past. Until you appear before the throne of God. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you to the devil. He will not leave you to the enemy. He will not forsake you in temptation. He will not leave you in the time of your weakness. He will not leave you in the time of your problem. He is the savior to the uttermost. In the day, in the night, you can lean upon him. At the beginning of the Christian life, at the end of the Christian life, you can lean upon him. Savior to the uttermost. At the beginning, in the middle, at the end. He will support you. He will carry you up. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. He will build a hedge around you. He will give you the power to continue. He will make you to overcome sin. He will make you to overcome the devil. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Whatever you have done, you may not even like yourself. Some people may not like you. But this Jesus is forever making intercession for you. You are beautiful in his sight. You are lovely in his sight. He loves you so much. His heart is moved with compassion for you. He is your savior, your sin bearer, your substitute. He is the surety of the new covenant. He is the one that has told the Father whatever he has offended, whatever he has done, whatever he has committed, charge that to my account. He has paid for it all. Lean upon the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Don't carry your guilt again. Don't carry your condemnation again. Lean upon the Lord. He's making intercession for you. Tell him to forgive you. Tell him to have mercy upon you. All your sins, all your debts are charged onto his account. It's your guarantor. It's standing shorty for you. Believe that God will carry you through. Heaven, yes, it will take you there. Trust in him. He will not fail you. 